Hey, I'm Amy Bergman, and this is my presentation on medical plants. I chose to do my research on tea. The scientific name of tea is Camellia sinensis. A little bit about the history of tea. The first written account of tea comes from the Chinese Tang Dynasty in 650 AD. Around the same time, Japanese Buddhist monks returned home from a trip to China with tea. It was originally used by royals, monks, and priests, but by 1330, all social classes in Japan had access. In the 17th century, the Dutch discovered the joy of tea and took it to Europe. It was then brought over to America by the colonists. There are two main varieties of tea, the Chinese teas and the Indian teas. The most common and widely used are the Chinese teas. All of these types of teas are made from the same part of the plant, the leaves. The difference is in when the leaves are picked and how they are processed. The difference in green tea and black tea is that black tea is fermented before the leaves are dried. Tea is grown as a shrub. In the wild, the plants can grow up to 17 meters tall, but those being cultivated are usually kept pruned to under two meters. The leaves are shiny and green, and sometimes they are hairy on the bottom. The plant produces white, aromatic flowers and greenish-brown fruits containing seeds. There are a great many medical benefits seen in tea. It can be used in the prevention and treatment of many conditions and disorders, especially cardiovascular and respiratory diseases and stress. Tea also stimulates the immune system, is an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, and has anti-radical and anti-cancer properties. The most beneficial active ingredient in teas are the polyphenols. Two types of polyphenols seen in tea are flavonoids and catechins. Flavonoids contribute to the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Catechins contribute to antioxidant and anti-carcinogenic properties of tea. The best known catechin is EGCG. In a study done on breast cancer in women, EGCG decreased the rate of growth and metastasization of tumor cells. EGCG can also bind to GABA receptors in the brain and induce sedation. Caffeine is also present in tea. However, the caffeine in tea behaves differently in the body than the caffeine in coffee. The caffeine in tea is known as theine. Theine combines with tannins in tea, which causes the absorption rate to be slower, which produces more regulated effects. Theine stimulates the central nervous system and cardiovascular system. It can increase concentration and energy without the crash felt sometimes after drinking coffee. Other active chemicals with medicinal properties are L-theanine and theophylline. L-theanine is an amino acid derivative able to cross the blood-brain barrier. It has a direct effect on the brain by inhibiting the excitation of neurons in the cortex, which could help reduce stress. Theophylline is an alkaloid and can act as either an inhibitor or an activator. It can cause smooth muscle relaxation, bronchodilation, and stimulates the central nervous system, making it a good treatment for asthma, bronchitis, and emphysema. There are some possible interactions and negative side effects. Because of its anti-radical properties and its ability to bind with free radicals, the use of tea is not suggested for those undergoing chemotherapy and radiation treatments. Excessive amounts of aminophylline, theophylline, and caffeine found in tea could lead to headaches and anxiety. Pregnant or nursing women are advised against excessive tea consumption due to negative effects on them and the baby. There are many customs and traditions that go along with the history of consumption of tea. One that stuck out to me was the Japanese tea ceremony, or chaido. Women in Japan participate in chaido, in which they prepare an offering or presentation of matcha. Matcha is powdered green tea. Years ago, the ceremony distinguished the different social classes and statuses Today, the tradition is carried on being taught to their children and grandchildren. This was a very interesting research project for me. I learned a great deal about tea, which I drink every day. I really hope that you enjoyed learning about it as much as I did. Thanks for watching.